In today's video, I'm going to show you how to edit 6K RAW video on the M4 MacBook Air, set it up in DaVinci Resolve, and make it extremely easy to do so, especially if you're editing 6K or higher RAW video from cameras like the Blackmagic Cinema 6K full frame that I have right here, the red Komodo that I have behind me over there, any RAW shooting camera, my method is going to show you how to do it easily. And also I'm going to explain why I use my method with this M4 MacBook Air over editing with proxies, because if you're shooting with cameras that film raw, there's a few settings that you don't get access to if you're editing in proxies. And so I want to go over that today just because that's been a little bit of a misconception in the past. Some of you have been asking in videos why I don't edit in proxies, so I wanted to go over that. But I also wanted to show you because I use this M4 MacBook Air as my travel computer. I edit with it on the go now. Um, I'm also using this new drive, which I guess we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but I edit it in this configuration. It is super small, compact. It's great for traveling, and I don't have any external monitors, so having this base model computer doesn't really affect me too much because I'm able to pretty much just use it like this, which is kind of the point, right, when you spend the money on a MacBook Air. So let's get started with uh, this tutorial on showing you how to edit 6K raw video in DaVinci Resolve on the M4 MacBook Air. <music> So I'm doing this from the couch because I want to emphasize this is how I edit with the M4 MacBook Air. I just use the computer itself and an SSD. Now I'm using this super small SSD instead of my OWC that I normally use. I'll bring it up to the camera here so you can see. I use it because it's extremely small. It's pretty fast. It's a Thunderbolt 3 speed SSD. So for all of my 6K red footage, black magic footage, I can edit all that no problem. What I get more on the OWC is I get the Thunderbolt 4 read and write speed. So for transferring files, it's way better. For editing, not a problem on this. And it keeps the computer nice and small, as you can see. So it's been really great. So first thing, let's open up the computer so I could show you the settings on how I set this thing up to edit. So I'm going to open up DaVinci Resolve and we'll drag some files there in a second, but I'm gonna start from scratch and I'm gonna start a new project. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to the edit page. I am going to bring in a red file. Uh, let's go to the Komodo. I got tons of footage in here. Let's just bring over something random. So I'm gonna choose this. Hopefully it's nothing too bad. Change, I'm not gonna not change it because we're gonna change those settings in a second. There we go, it's in. Okay, looks like these are some of the shots I had when I was filming with Claire a few years ago. So here is some red footage. As you can see, it's playing no skipping whatsoever, playing no problem, but it's not graded yet. There's nothing done to it. And then there's also some other stuff. So let's look at the timeline. So for the project settings, by default, I have my computer set to start all projects in 1080p. And we're gonna leave it there. That's one of the secrets of how I edit on the M4 MacBook Air. But just to show you, let's go and start it at 4K, because at first you're going to see there's not going to be issues, and then you'll see why I go to 1080. So right now we're on a 4K timeline, and it's still playing back, no problem. Now let's go add some coloring to it. Let's go add the raw tab. I'm just going to do a very, very uh, basic grade. Not even really a grade, just more like a uh, add some color to it. And, you know, I'm just going to leave it here just so we could see the playback. You can see, actually, the computer is handling it pretty decently, uh, even with the light um, raw tab changes. But then let's go start adding a bunch more footage in here. Let's just, for the heck of it, let's go grab a bunch of these files. And let's take some and let's add another layer. And let's add another layer. Do that, do this. That's handling it, that's handling it.
Now let's start adding effects. So we're gonna go to generators and we're just gonna choose some random effects here. Actually, we'll go to filters and we'll just add the zoom blur to all of these. As you can see now with just one effect, we are not getting smooth playback at all whatsoever. Now I'm kind of exaggerating this just to show you how quick uh, you can get not smooth playback, but now that is at a 4K timeline. So there is a solution. Now I go to the project settings, and as I said before, I leave things in 1080p. Now, a lot of you may be asking, why don't you use proxies? And I'm gonna show you right now, and this is specifically if you're dealing with cameras that shoot raw video, especially 6K raw video, 8K raw video, even 4K raw video at that point, you want to be able to do this um, in order to not lose some functionality. So we're in the 1080p timeline, and as you can see, it's smooth again. We can play it back, not a problem. And this is three layers of video right here. So the main reason, and we'll go back to a nicer looking shot just so, uh, cause that, that was one shot that I did uh, in order to show the black balance on the red Komodo not looking right. So I know this is a funky filter, but just stick with me right here. So right here is the camera raw tab. Now, whether you're dealing with footage from red cameras or you're dealing with black magic or any other raw shooting camera, you're gonna have some kind of raw tab in DaVinci Resolve. Now, red is big because of how great their raw control is. As you can see, I can change the color space, I can change the ISO in post, I can change the color temperature, the tint. There's a lot that you can change in post that if you decide to edit in proxies, you immediately lose all of these raw controls, no matter what raw codec you have. And I tend to use the raw control tab all the time, especially with this kind of footage. So for me, editing in proxies, unless you're editing with footage from 10-bit cameras, like this Osmo Pocket I'm on, a Sony camera, DJI, GoPro, whatever it may be, you want to edit in the 1080p timeline to get the most out of your footage. And then, yeah, when it comes to exporting, I'll go back and I'll change the settings right before I export back into 4K and I'll go into my export and I'll export it as a 4K file. And although it may take longer than an M4 Mac Mini or Mac Mini Pro or any of the higher GPU chips, it's still gonna export and it's gonna be a fine quality file. But for the whole editing experience, I made things nice and smooth on a 1080p timeline. Now, the only other thing I would recommend is if you are going to go crazy on effects and noise reduction and everything, and you're using effects that it doesn't matter if you switch to a 1080p timeline, or if you're going crazy on effects, going and switching to a 720p timeline, which on a crazy effects heavy timeline, that may actually save you a little bit um, as far as not having to have the footage skip or anything. As you can see, it's still 16 by nine. I'm still able to edit everything and it's the same process. When I'm done, I would go and I would export this thing in 4K. And as long as you're not using any effects that have to be in the actual native resolution, it will scale up, you'll be able to export no problem. It all comes down to the main reason I am lowering the resolution versus using proxies is the raw tab. As you can see, it is very important. Now there's one more function that if you're still having issues playing back your footage, you may wanna mess with. And uh, let me go back here just so I could walk you through again. So you wanna go to file, you wanna go back to project settings. Now this has to do with raw footage as well. If you're editing footage from Blackmagic or Red and you're still having slow playback, even at 1080p or 720, we're, since we're editing on the Red, let's, let's scroll over the Red, just so I have some Red. Oh, let's go this, this Suns. We'll go here. That was uh, Grant Cardone. That was a video I did with him a long time ago. Um, let's go here. Let's go Project Settings. So this is going to be for Red. It also is for Blackmagic, Canon, Cinema DNG, Nikon, pretty much any of the cameras that shoot raw, you can change these settings. So I'm gonna go into red and I'm gonna change the decode quality to, I'm gonna do one eighth. Uh, and it is going to decrease the quality of the actual footage, but that will also help you with playback if you're experiencing issues. Now. I wouldn't necessarily go much further than that. You could go all the way to 1 16th, 
but that's gonna really lower it. Now, when you're going to export, you wanna bring everything back to the way it was. So full, co uh, full res premium. You also wanna change the bit depth and go back to 16-bit because we are shooting with a RED camera that shoots 16-bit raw. So make sure you change your bit depth back, save it, go change your timeline back to 4K, which I think it already is. Nope, let's change it back to 4K. And then you're good to export. You go to the export tab, export it wherever you want. It will be a 4K file. And by doing these settings and changes, you actually save yourself so much time editing on the M4 MacBook Air. And it makes this a super usable computer. The other thing to note is I know a lot of people talk about thermal throttling because that is a problem with the M4 MacBook Air. It's part of the reason I did the whole thermal pad mod. This thing is not hot. I am not yet pushing it to its limits. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about the M4 MacBook Air. I did the thermal pad mod not because I needed it, but when I occasionally push these things to its limits, especially it may start getting hot when I, I start exporting this video, I have it there just for that extra little performance. So the video will export a bit faster, but this thing is handling all this and it's not getting hot, which is great because during the edit, I don't necessarily want this thing to get hot, especially sitting on my lap right here. So that's pretty much it. It's relatively simple once you get the hang of it and it's very similar to the process I use on the M4 Mac Mini. So if you have any questions after this video, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.